and uh, uh, good morning to all uh, uh, members of uh, ITPLS committees uh, as well as the coordinators for this master class series lectures. Uh, also, good morning to all the participants who are attending this uh, master class lecture. So I will be uh, sharing my presentation and uh, in a few seconds. Hope that uh, screen is visible. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. But so, can you hide uh, that uh, indicator at the pop up at the? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I uh, uh, actually I like to thank uh, that uh, ITPLS uh, coordinators for uh, giving me opportunity to talk on this subject, and the topic of my uh, talk is smart machine tools and machining technologies. So before I get into the subject uh, and uh, try to uh, gi give some uh, theoretical as well as some uh, case studies what we have been doing at CMTI, I will just like to introduce uh, uh, CMTI to the audience. Uh, so CMTI uh, is basically uh, at present we are coming under Department of Heavy Industry, uh, Ministry of Heavy Industry and Public Enterprises. And we are working uh, basically in technology readiness level uh, 3 to uh, 8. So uh, from proof of concept to industry ready products and deployment to industry, that's the way we have been working. We are working in advanced manufacturing technology where the development as well as deployment, both uh, is our um, uh, mandate to do that. So uh, if you see our history, we started with machine tool technology somewhere in 1965. And we have been working for quite, uh, quite long time in machine tool arena only, uh, somewhere till uh, late of 90s. And uh, all associated technology which were going uh, to, to build, uh, you know, uh, advanced machine tools in our country, we have been working on that. Later, uh, we started diversifying uh, somewhere in the late 90s. And then uh, we started working on ultra precision engineering and additive manufacturing, nano manufacturing, mechatronics and automation, industrial vision, sensor uh, technology, MEMS uh, sensor development, uh, development of textile machines and uh, ultra precision uh, machines uh, aggregates developments and uh, aerospace uh, systems development surface engineering and uh, of course smart manufacturing industry 4.0 we have been working from last uh, three to three years now so uh, our uh, how we are well connected with smart manufacturing uh, that uh, we like to uh, bring uh, to your notice that uh, dhi that uh, our uh, parent uh, organization uh, that uh, ministry where we are associated uh, has a scheme called Samarth Udyog Bharat 4. So this is basically a uh, part of uh, their scheme for enhancement of competitiveness in Indian capital goods sector. So under that uh, Samarth Udyog uh, platform, they have set up uh, four center um, uh, all over India. So CMTI at Bangalore and IAC at Bangalore, there are two common engineering facility center of Samarth Udyog. And then there is a center at C4, I4 at Pune and uh, another center at IIT Delhi um, in mechanical engineering department. And uh, they are also uh, supporting uh, IIT Kharagpur uh, uh, to establish one more center. So now we, we are becoming five instead of four. That is the way. So what uh, all these centers are doing actually, the centers has uh, some common goal and some specific objectives. So uh, if you look into CMTI uh, uh, that uh, objectives, what we have been working. So we are setting up a smart factory, which is digital twin for both looking into design, production and performance of, uh, you know, the machines and assets uh, in domain of uh, metal cutting, ad uh, additive manufacturing and sheet metal uh, cutting. So that is the thing and that um, uh, uh, by end of this year, the, this factory is going to uh, get inaugurated. <coughs> Also, uh, we are uh, this uh, our uh, center. Uh, we have created a platform uh, where development, uh, testing, and validation of Industry 4.0 um, products and smart manufacturing solution can be envisaged. And we have been doing ourselves. We have been doing many uh, development works. Uh, also, uh, along with industries, also we are doing many many development works. So that I will be uh, briefly telling you um, later. 
we are coming out we are coming out with smart manufacturing solution particularly for msme so because uh, there are many solutions available uh, in smart manufacturing industry 4.0 which are not affordable and we have a large chunk of msme in our country so uh, they are uh, to see that uh, customized solution uh, which is um, uh, i mean uh, which works for indian msme uh, we, we are bringing out uh, so that uh, we are doing and uh, also uh, we are uh, having a platform for training and experimental learning so i think cmt all all the time we have been uh, working on training but particularly for executives and all but under this um, uh, scheme we are also now try, trying to um, uh, train students engineering students and uh, uh, and also um, the pass out uh, the engineering pass outs uh, the freshers and all we are trying to uh, offer some programs uh, for experimental learning so this is the about brief about our center so if you see our activities that uh, our center is called smart manufacturing uh, demonstration and development uh, center as uh, a part of uh, samarthudya so our activities uh, are uh, divided into many aspects so at our uh, uh, facility we have many industry 4.0 implementation which are uh, uh, demonstrable and uh, which uh, where you know people can see how industry 4 uh, solutions are uh, going to work for indian industry so these implementation we have done basically by uh, using the ready made products actually which is available from jais or bosch or max white or many more and uh, that gives lot of learning and this is the first thing what we started doing then uh, of course uh, we are uh, working on uh, r&d uh, our own r&d projects for development and de uh, deployment of uh, solutions uh, which are uh, affordable low cost and all uh, also we are working with industry um, collaborative projects uh, uh, because uh, as per the uh, scheme we have to work with industry in 80 20 mode so where the 80% uh, percent contribution is uh, from Uh, DHI and CMTI and 20% from industry. So in that we are uh, we have taken some uh, bigger projects uh, with HEL, with Siemens, with IMTMA, with Acumec, Hexagon and Utunga. So apart from that, uh, many more we are envisaging uh, work with that. And they are for very specific uh, sort of uh, solutions which are uh, very useful for large amount of Indian uh, manufacturing industry. So that's where we are working. And uh, we are also taking up some sponsored uh, projects at cmti where uh, people uh, industry is funding and we are doing that and uh, of course our smart factory is going to be a national facility and it is uh, available for demo and demonstration and also it can uh, work as a test uh, bench for uh, others if somebody else is developing they can also try out uh, their solution in our smart factory and uh, training and awareness so we have been conducting a lot of webinars i think uh, last year we conducted around uh, 30 uh, webinars and uh, more than 3000 um, uh, people have participated and we conducted uh, many training programs one national conference also we have conducted and many more we are planning uh, with uh, other institutes also so including ieas and all so now uh, coming back to uh, the subject before i get into that so what is industry 4 uh, and what is smart manufacturing before i get into smart machine tools and uh, smart uh, machining technologies so <clears throat> i think most of uh, us we are aware that uh, we are in industry 4.0 uh, uh, you know arena now uh, which is you know it started from uh, 21st century uh, uh, but we should also let's see the history how uh, this industry 4 came so the first of all that first industrial revolution uh, somewhere in uh, end of 18th century uh, it has uh, started and that was uh, basically propelled by uh, water and steam power so that uh, many machines started coming uh, by 18th century uh, and all and uh, basically uh, which is driven by steam power and all so this is there in the history book and later the second industrial revolution came Uh, somewhere in end of uh, 19th century where that uh, electrical uh, uh, machines came electrical energy and electrical machines uh, started coming which are started helping into some mass production work and all so that is uh, the, uh, almost after 100 years you know that this one came then industry 3 came so industry 3 ke revolution came in somewhere in quarter 4 of 20th century somewhere in 1970s 75 and all so is that during that time the cnc machines you know and plc uh, machines plc driven machines robots and it to uh, automate production these all started coming uh, but they were actually uh, 
they were uh, automatic but on stand alone sort of thing so that was the basic concept but uh, they were uh, doing also automatic production now in this arena of industry 4.0 we are looking into all the machines connected to each other and uh, also uh, you know driven through iot internet of things that industrial iot so uh, that uh, informations uh, can seamlessly flow through uh, cloud uh, uh, from one place to other uh, ge geographic lo location and we are considering these machines and assets like a cyber physical system zero physical system alone so we have uh, physical uh, things uh, and we have a cyber or digital virtual uh, models also and they connect to each other very well uh, using digital twin augmented reality real time intelligence and uh, we are able to uh, take many decisions in real time because this is the this thing so this industry 4.0 is different than the industry 3 from the aspects of iot from uh, the cyber physical systems and and basically driven by ai and ml uh, techniques and all so that is a thing uh, industry 4 so what is smart manufacturing so smart manufacturing uh, uh, actually if you look into that uh, where we what we are looking into it is manufacturing the core of manufacturing is the factory so <laughs> within a smart factory we have various machines and inspection systems and um, uh, things which are helping us to do production so there is a lot of uh, uh, that integration among them they are all connected to each other that is all horizontal integ integration and all these assets are helping us to do uh, productions uh, we, uh, which are uh, more efficient and productive and uh, all diagnostics everything is possible so this is part of smart factory but smart manufacturing is uh, you know is connecting all the vertical of a uh, of a organization where the production systems are getting well connected with the design of systems well connected with the customers well connected with the um, uh, supply chain and uh, uh, entire things so in this uh, process we are getting the maximum benefit where all verticals is not only horizontal integration also uh, within the vertical but across the vertical also there is an integration so that's the way we are looking in so with the smart manufacturing definitely we can achieve uh, lo uh, higher productivity more efficient operations at lower cost and also uh, you know design to uh, uh, product turnout time also will be very less so that's the way we are looking and we can face with smart manufacturing we can face global competitions okay well, now the arena is there in the, where that uh, uh, we have to face a global competition so uh, so this is possible through uh, smart manufacturing <coughs> now coming to the subject <coughs> that uh, which uh, i have been supposed to talk more that is smart machine tools and machining so let us uh, have an overview of this uh, so what is smart machine so a smart machine can be considered as an intelligent uh, sort of device that uses machine to machine communication and they are able to take autonomous decision and solve the problem uh, without uh, operator or human intervention so that's the way intelligent uh, smart machines are envisaged then what is machine tool if you see a machine tool is one type of machine right but machine tools i think uh, from that point of view how it is different than other machine because machine tools in that machine will drive a cutting tool right and in this machine sir we are supposed to produce some components okay so there is some raw material going to the machine and some product comes out of the machine using a cutting tool driven by the machine so from that point of view it is slightly more complex machine so in this machine uh, in, uh, machine in, uh, intelligent machine tool what we are uh, what is our inputs basically cad uh, information a uh, design information or the process information in terms of material and setup plans and uh, in this so we are expecting the machine if it is a, uh, you know it is an intelligent machine or smart machine it can take autonomous decision and it should produce accurate very uh, components and uh, also it should give information regarding the what quality what output uh, coming out of that what is the machine condition how is the how is the productivity of the machine uh, uh, including the downtime and uh, other setup times and all so everything should come out as output and which goes flows to the uh, smart factory that's the way we are looking into intelligent machine tool so when we are smart machines tools and other things we are developing we have to look into uh, the features which makes it uh, you know well connected and uh, uh, and uh, uh, in reality it achieves all the objectives of uh, from uh, smart manufacturing now coming to the machining processes we are all knowing that what is the machining processes like turning milling grinding and so on 
so um, uh, i i'll also be, if you look into that the machining processes are generally uh, machine tools uh, or cnc machines uh, they are basically a closed loop system if you see their uh, configuration which i will put in next slide they are basically closed but this machining processes they are basically open uh, uh, loop uh, system in general so uh, if we are if we are able to sense the uh, if you are able to sense the machine uh, machining processes uh, using some sensors and if we have some process model uh, which is uh, where the knowledge uh, is uh, uh, embedded into that by a learning process and then we can do process control and that is called intelligent machining so in that process not only the basic machine is a closed loop even the processes cutting uh, the uh, metal cutting processes also becomes uh, a closed loop so that is intelligent machining so cmti has been working in both the area uh, development of smart machine tool and intelligent machining um, from uh, quite few years and uh, also what we are looking is that that uh, not the, not only the machine is uh, you know uh, accurate even the uh, products which are coming out of the machines they are also should be accurate and it should be or uh, or the process entire the um, uh, machining processes through machine should be productive as well as also we are looking into ease of operation nowadays nowadays with this iot and other things uh, you can also uh, um, uh, make the operation uh, quite user friendly okay so that this is our these all targets of our technology development in this domain so now let's see some of the features of smart machine tools which are making it unique uh, with uh, uh, from other uh, normal machine tools uh, so uh, including some uh, cnc machines so <clears throat> smart machine tool should adapt to changing conditions means suppose there is a while cutting if chatter comes and all it should be able to adapt and it should uh, um, uh, either uh, do it correct it itself or it should at least it should give some uh, alarm or some notification to the operator to do make some changes so that uh, that is the way we should we are looking into uh, adapting uh, to the changing conditions <clears throat> then uh, another feature of that is that smart machine tool invariably should have open architecture cnc so why it is required and also sensor interface so why it is required because in 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 smart machines uh, machine tools we need need, uh, need, uh, need to uh, sense the processes and all machining processes so we may require many sensors so uh, then those, there, there has to be interface there are some some sensing is possible through cnc control itself but there could be also some if you are looking into um, uh, um, if you add on date state of art technologies so in modern days that uh, you know that uh, machine tool oems will provide you cnc machines with some some outputs uh, which are connected with maybe a power uh, torque or sort of or temperature sort of thing but may not be for the countries considering the processes It means if you want to measure the cutting forces or vibrations or uh, uh, maybe acoustic emissions uh, which is coming from the machining process they may not provide so you must have some inter interfaces also so we are looking ideally for, with uh, that and open architecture cnc is uh, making uh, things open uh, the cnc in, in the way that we can add some module means we can develop some ai ml based uh, um, algorithms and which uh, and we can convert into uh, some pro programs and which can be it can be connected to cnc so that is called open that open architecture cnc only will uh, make it possible <clears throat> now now if you see a lot of informations uh, will be coming in that in the process when we make this uh, machine tool smart so uh, the machine tool should have ex extensive information process capability processing capability so that that way we have to look into the new smart machine tools then <clears throat> smart machine tool definitely uh, should have uh compensation that machine tool will have errors right so it will have errors connected with geometrical um, uh, um, 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 geometrical errors and also thermoelastic uh, therm uh, because of uh, thermoelastic displacement some errors will occur so we should be able to compensate uh, this uh, through electronic uh, means so electronic compensation in real time of this uh, machine tool positioning geometrical uh, errors and thermoelastic uh, displacement related errors should be feasible then of course we are when we are talking of that of any smart uh, uh, manufacturing system always people talk of uh, you should be able to know what is happening so definitely so we definitely we should be able to do 
sensor based condition monitoring and self diagnostics that is that that is that is very compulsory in case of uh, smart machine tools also machine tools apart from machine uh, subsystems it will have cutting tools and uh, that is very important if cutting uh, tool is becoming a blunt or it has more wear it may lead into errors on the component so tool condition cutting tool tool condition monitoring also should be one of the features in machine tool smart machine tools vibration and chatter is uh, invariably in if you see in machining processes i think every machine tool will have some stability zone so if you are uh, if we if we are uh, or sometimes if your tool is blunt then you may not get the stability uh, zone also you not able to work in that so in that case uh, we should be able and we same time we should not spoil the component right so we should have some sort of uh, means and mechanism for uh, vibration and chatter control then a uh, process monitoring uh, that which i was talking uh, just now i told you, intelligent machining uh, you know based on the sensor should be possible in the smart machine tool which are invariably not found in most of the uh, even modern days uh, machines which are coming from the world based uh, oem so this sensor based process monitoring is not uh, uh, still not uh, i mean it is fully implemented in state of art machines also so that uh, is slowly it is uh, it is emerging area where people, lot of people are working uh, uh, so i think slowly it is going to come now uh, thing is that if you want uh, sensor based process monitoring and the process control uh, we should have some models for different machining processes and where that you know that sensor is basically input to those models and these models are already it is trained uh, you know uh, it has it has knowledge so that can help us in uh, process control so these are the um, um, one of the feature of state of art machine tools so on machine methodology machine you know in fact in machine uh, tool we are make, making components right so the components uh, generally in, uh, if you see it goes you know after the uh, component is produced it goes for inspection offline and then uh, then um, sometimes uh, if it needs to be corrected it comes back to the machine so uh, nowadays the people are looking in, uh, into with the features with uh, non contact techniques contact uh, probes probing also so on machine methodology is possible so in that case we can you know before the job is and it can be compared with your uh, you know that uh, design uh, tolerances and uh, cad informations then uh, we can uh, also manage the accuracies so and if it is uh, uh, if it is uh, suppose uh, there is some allowances left and and that accuracy is not correct then we can correct it otherwise we may have to filter it out so now so now other than that uh, i think uh, now we are looking when we are talking of this industry 4.0 the iiot is one of the most important thing where which is able to which will help us to connect uh, our machine from one place uh, from one geographical location to another geographical location uh, through cloud so that iot uh, that features uh, should be there and uh, also uh, we should have um, possible there is a, there should be uh, nowadays people are talking of edge analytics instead of cloud analytics so uh, people are looking into some analytics uh, uh, which is useful for machine tool to uh, give some real time uh, corrections and all at uh, at edge only that is very close to the machines only so those uh, features uh, uh, edge controller and edge analytics based uh, um, uh, processing and all should be possible in near the machine so that's the way we are looking into that now let us come, uh, see the smart machine tool uh, you know the concept uh, how it has come so it is not that a smart machine tool is totally different than that normal cnc machine so it is basically add on so if you look into a normal cnc machine uh, for one particular axis like this is a one axis maybe x axis uh, you know and then it is driven by servo motors and there is a servo control drives and all and there is a cnc cnc systems so that is the way it is a closed loop system so if any movement is taking place for machining it is sensed and it is you know it is feedback is given and then if there is a correction required in positioning of the uh, axis uh, that is done through the servo uh, control so this is servo control cnc uh, machine tools so that's the way we have been working now if you are looking into smart machine tool then we look into some more features in that so let us see that what are the features we have to add in this so instead of that now we are looking into not only we are looking into making the machine uh, you know movements uh, close loop even the machining processes also we want to make a close loop so we will have cutting processes and in cutting processes we'll have different sensors so the sensors like cutting force temperature vibration and all they are getting sensed and uh, uh, also we can have some sensors directly mounted on machines also which can be used it for diagnostics 
and if it is uh, you know taken from the um, also uh, if it is we are sensing the processes using force uh, cutting force and uh, temperatures and all uh, we can do process control we can have some um, uh, models uh, which can uh, you know which which is which is basically trained and uh, which can work in real time uh, based on the uh, uh, knowledge what it has and it can help us to give some correction to the uh, basic cnc machine so that is the way it looks into that and also we can look into a uh, component also measurements and all that uh, you know quality of the components uh, after the process is over we can on the machine itself we can check the quality and we can take that input also and then we can put into and again if any corrections are required we can look into that so it is basically add on of some more loops uh, you know closed loops into the basic cnc loop so that is the way we can achieve the uh, uh, smart machine tool now coming to cmt uh, you know i will just start with one case uh, study and then we'll discuss that uh, what are things we have been doing so cmt has developed a smart uh, ultra precision machine tool we call intelligent ultra precision turning machine uh, way back in 2013 so <clears throat> in this if you see basically this machine tool is a basically itself is a very uh, you know uh, high precision machine uh, uh, meant for basically diamond turning of uh, and producing some optical quality surfaces on um, metals so that is there but same time uh, we also developed uh, many technologies uh, which makes the machine tool smart uh, so that let us see what it actually what are things there so the machine the first one is that this uh, machine error so i i was mentioning you know that uh, machine will have uh, error in, in uh, uh, inherent errors connected with positioning of various axes geometrical like straightness uh, pitch yaw and roll sort of errors it will have which is, which makes uh, machine inaccurate and also machine will have some thermoelastic uh, displacement errors which occurs because of temperature changes because machines are made of made from steel i think mainly steel alloys are used uh, and uh, uh, mainly so that invariably it, it has high comparatively higher coefficient of thermal expansion so it will have it will lead into some thermoelastic error so so we have developed a uh, few modules in this for correcting all positioning error geometrical errors and thermoelastic errors in real time taking feedback from the sensors mounted on the machines and they are all driven by ai ml uh, you know modules and all so this is what we have done then second part is that machine diagnostics so that is one of the basic part of any uh, smart um, uh, machines and all so you should be able to do self diagnostics and all so we we have we have developed some module which can do uh, health monitoring uh, based on vibration and temperature and all and also uh, we can do on machine itself the you know some dynamic balancing if it is required you know uh, then we can do that and uh, also uh, tool uh, cutting tool condition monitoring also we can do and uh, as we have many sensor mounted on the machine if any sensor is not working then also that we can find out whether the sensor itself is faulty so that's where we have some of the things we have done and uh, it is basically based on open architecture motion control and uh, we can do uh, of course it is iot enabled and we can do remote we can send all the information we can monitor it through cloud okay and cloud based uh, dashboard uh, we can do that so also then process part we have done some few works because that uh, a lot of works needs to be done in this area to make the process intelligent so the, uh, the first thing what we did we, we have developed a module again it is aiml based technique for surface error predictions predictions uh, in for uh, you know for intelligent machining so this is all i will be discussing in coming slides so now if you look into feature wise so we had a ultra precision machine a turning machine which itself i think if you see some of the features uh, you will find very unique which is not found in other machine like uh, uh, you know it's a type of uh, drives like linear motor driven uh, this thing spindles aerostatic spindles uh, and the machine structure is made of granite and all of course that uh, slides and other things are made of metal but this machine is isolated uh, you know like that many sensors are mounted on the machines and uh, job job uh, job holding uh, you know uh, are uh, basically the, um, through vacuum and all and the coolant system also unique it is mist coolant and also like many features are there in that uh, the machine which are making it is an all high precision machines and all but apart from that let us look into the intelligence part so we have i think as i mentioned that real time machine error uh, corrections we can do it and uh, real time diagnostics we can do 
some uh, prognosis part using intelligent machining and all and even some prognosis part in the uh, you know in tool uh, particularly tool life uh, we, we we are able to we have done and uh, of course the machine has uh, some features for active vibration control and ad adaptive control so this is the thing and then let's uh, i will just quickly go through that how we have done uh, this works and all so the first part is that the positioning error or geometrical error compensation of this on this machine so what we have actually if you look into that machines uh, you know this positioning errors will occur in 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 your linear axis basically so the suppose this machine i think this is a hardin's uh, hard turning machine and the uh, next one is our um, diamond turning machine so these are uh, all invariably it will have two axes uh, x and z and then sometimes uh, in the spindle will also be c axis so that uh, will have to uh, um, look into the errors of all these axes so let us look into the error of a linear axis where we can look uh, correct this positioning error so then what we have we have different feed rate and different position so the uh, machine this axis can position at different place at different feed rate so these are the basically inputs right so these inputs sir uh, if we are able to give it to into some ai ml based uh, you know uh, compensation module which we have developed uh, at uh, this thing then uh, this thing and if we are able to train them properly with the errors which is uh, when it is moving forward or reverse then later when we implement this in machine then it can predict uh, it can start predicting the based on the position and feed rate it can start predicting the errors and uh, that can be corrected you know uh, using a c program which can be uh, uh, integrated into motion controller so that is the way we are looking into that so we have done uh, successfully and we have achieved some results uh, so which i will be sharing with you in the next slide so let us see so this is a geometrical error correction so of one of the axis of this machine so using real time using basically nn based uh, sort of algorithm and all so this nn is one of the um, neural network is one of the artificial intelligence uh, and uh, you know this thing algorithm uh, which we can uh, achieve um, uh, some you can use for industrial uh, applications so let us see so let us see the error linear error that is a positioning error so if you see the blue one uh, actually it was uh, before correction so it was a few of course it is ultra precision machine so it was around 4 to 4.5 micrometers uh, for that uh, stroke of around 200 now if you see after this uh, implementation and uh, you know uh, development of uh, nn based uh, neural network based uh, um, algorithm and implementing it uh, that we are able to achieve you know almost uh, you know in terms of less than 100 nanometer less than 0.1 micrometer error we are able to achieve in position so this is a uh, this is a real time you know uh, that uh, uh, in this, uh, this scenario and it is after validation so like that so like that uh, machine will have you know geometrical errors like pitch pitch yaw and roll uh, you know uh, pitch yaw and roll and also it will have these are angular error pitch and yaw and roll and apart from that it will have straightness error in vertical and horizontal direction so everywhere the blue one is uh, before before correction and uh, the red one is after correction so if you quickly look into that not only the linear error apart from the angular error like pitch yaw and roll and also straightness to straightness error in horizontal and vertical direction we are able to bring down uh, you know with the implementation of these um, uh, algorithms in real time we are able to bring down with, uh, within some uh, nanometers level the hundreds of nanometers level we are able to bring down so that is uh, one of the achievements what we have done in that our machine now let us look into thermo thermoelastic errors so actually if you look into thermoelastic error is a basic uh, is a big problem for most of most of the machine tool OEMs, and particularly in the country like India, where the temperature changes, you know, from winter to summer, uh, and place to place, uh, you know, it goes from uh, sometimes uh, zero to 44, 45 degrees centigrade. So this is large variation. Uh, you can expect that machine uh, will give you inaccurate uh, parts uh, during uh, in different uh, season and uh, during different conditions and different places. Same machine. So, so how to you know we can definitely correct and this is one of the technique uh, which is uh, um, uh, which, uh, which is uh, very useful uh, in real time electronic uh, by using electronic means and uh, we can correct uh, and using again artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning techniques uh, we, we can develop algorithm and uh, in real time based on the temperature uh, of the machine at few places not at all places a uh, few places we can correct the uh, error which is occurring um, uh, between tool and uh, job and uh, we can get the uh, results 
so uh, i think uh, if you look into that uh, if you look into that uh, this uh, this the flow chart and all so uh, we need to uh, what we need to do is that we have to do lot of experimental work initially to identify which are the correct locations uh, you know uh, we have to do temperature mapping and uh, and also we have to with temperature we have to do mapping of the thermoelastic displacement during experimental work and we have to find out which are the locations uh, uh, and which are the temperature uh, which are sensitive to uh, uh, the thermoelastic displacement so once we are uh, able to find out the temperature uh, uh, locations and all uh, machine uh, locations where the temperatures changes are occurring and which are resulting into the error uh, uh, between tool and job uh, in terms of thermoelastic displacement then we can uh, train for further data we can do different condition we can do and then find out uh, with this we can train uh, 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 you know artificial basically neural network here where we have used there are different type of techniques there are uh, you know it is a simple uh, you know uh, back propagation neural network here but in the, in reality uh, you know we have gone much ahead and uh, some complex uh, sort of uh, uh, this uh, artificial intelligence techniques we have developed cmk uh, for uh, giving the correct solution so now let's see. so basically what we are doing is that uh, that uh, in real time that few sensors are mounted on the machine and uh, while working they will sense temperature and it will go to the uh, already that module which is thermal composition module which is based on uh, the already trained module and uh, which can uh, compute in real time the errors and that uh, that errors uh, can be corrected through program uh, through cnc uh, and fed to cnc control and uh, corrects that so that is the way so now if you see the results no so if we, if we look into one shift of operation almost almost 8 hours and all the error was changing uh, in one machine at 50 micrometer you know 50 micrometer is quite a big value for precision machines and all so with this implementation of this technique in real time we are able to achieve uh, almost 3 micrometer and all uh, the errors and all so and also <coughs> we have not only we validated this also so we implemented this into our uh, machine one of the machine and uh, what was happening let us see the one component uh, that uh, where the radius uh, you know we are machining some uh, spherical uh, cup sort of thing and on uh, on continuous basis so the radius uh, tolerance was only one micrometer okay so 3.288 is basic dimension and uh, tolerance is one micrometer only and form error of this uh, you know this uh, spherical um, shape was 1.2 micrometer so what used to happen you no know, the radius uh, was changing you know after five six component it was going out of tolerance before implementation of this technique uh, thermal error compensation so we once we implemented then uh, you know we we keep on as it uh, you know as the thermal uh, errors are coming up uh, beyond some threshold value then correction will take place and it is maintaining that so you know after 46 component also you can get this you know the same band actually so this uh, uh, you know that is a validation and this real time experimental work after implementation so the next one is that uh, uh, I think uh, monitoring of machine and diagnostics. So that is very important in smart uh, machine tools and all. So machine tool will have elements like spindles, uh, slides and all. This needs to be monitored in real time. Okay. Uh, so and uh, the conditions and all. So what, how we can uh, monitor? The best way is that uh, you can monitor using a vibration sensor. So if you have a vibration sensor, uh, then you can find out uh, uh, what is the real time vibration. Of course. Uh, you should have also uh, some reference levels so you can compare uh, these vibration levels uh, this thing uh, with the reference level and if the values if the values are going beyond certain uh, level then uh, you can uh, we can have some alarms or, uh, to the operator and also uh, you uh, if it is uh, further if we, we can work on that and we can predict the life also of the machine element so you know the prognosis is also possible not only diagnostics so this is the way we are looking so we have developed some uh, modules where what we have done for the machine tools for each of the you know measurement point on the machine we have a reference level I mean when machine was good we have reference level it means reference it could be a single value parameters like overall vibration level or it could be a vibration spectrum itself in the particular band so we do the reference things are there with us and that real time uh, we have this vibration sensors are mounted no so with that we are able to get that some information we uh, of uh, this thing in terms of real uh, single value parameters like overall values or crest factor or peak level these type of things we are able to get 
and we are which we are comparing with the uh, reference values and we are able to uh, tell whether the it is good or bad so that is there and uh, fortunately for uh, this thing we have some standards also so international standards are there uh, which is telling uh, when it is good and when it is bad so that's why we are doing that also we can compare the entire spectral spectrum itself like vibration spectrum in the band we can compare and with that also we can do diagnostics so that is the way we have done some work and we implemented and later these informations can be further looked into using uh, again that machine learning techniques and uh, ai ml we can do prognosis uh, or we can uh, health ass assessment life assessment we can do so that is the thing we have done at cmk now uh, coming to this was regarding some you know very smart uh, you know state of art machine which is developed by oems including cmt but what about uh, machines uh, which are already there you know so i think this is a, one of the task uh, given to uh, the samarth udyog centers so we have plenty of machines with industry 2 generation and industry 3 generations so how to make them smart they are uh, so that also cmt has done a lot of work in that so uh, what we have done so let us see one machine it is a 5 axis vmc it is a 70 1970s uh, it is somewhere 75 uh, or early, uh, early 80s this uh, machine was uh, at uh, procured cmti so uh, and it doesn't have any you know uh, if you the controller and all very old cnc so you cannot tap the data information anything from uh, this thing from the controller and uh, it is uh, doing is a closed loop operation but uh, fine but nothing uh, you can see from uh, you cannot take any information from out of that so so then what to do so in that what we have done we have incorporated we have some ex external you know sensors like temperature vibration pressure energy and all uh, this thing we have uh, put and um, we are also to uh, for quality inspection uh, we have put a vision based inspection system so with that uh, we are able to and we have developed some uh, some analytics edge based analytics and cloud based analytics and we created a dashboard a uh, cloud based dashboard there we can monitor the thermal behavior we can monitor the uh, spindle uh, health uh, and uh, axis health that is machine health we can monitor uh, temperatures we can monitor energy we can monitor that energy monitoring is also very important because in with energy monitoring uh, some nowadays people are able to it is not useful for productivity also it gives you a lot of information and uh, regarding process also so that way we are able to and with the vision vision based uh, external vision camera based i think we have a group working on the camera based uh, vision system so they uh, we associated with them and they come out with uh, methodology by which the components are inspected on the machine itself so there's a way we uh, we have done some work actually at cmti so converting uh, legacy cnc machine into smart machine so also we looked into uh, uh, that uh, not only metal cutting uh, even edt manufacturing so we lot of uh, machines are there you know edt machines are there so which are again uh, you know some sort of legacy we can call so that because it is not iot enabled and uh, so how to make it iot enabled uh, so that uh, that uh, we have done some work and that also area so we have created some app and all within using app uh, you know we can uh, also we can uh, through cloud we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, um, upload our program g codes and all for you know uh, process uh, for manufacturing for edt manufacturing we can do that and also we can monitor the machine through through cloud so that is all there's a possibility we have done this all so uh, we have added some sensors also and uh, we can monitor the process uh, you know uh, through uh, you know through vision systems also so that is way we have done and apart from monitoring the process parameters like temperature and all for edt processes so like that uh, you know some dashboard you can see that dashboard is there for the 3d printer uh, it's a fdm printer basically so it is uh, you know it is like a technology demonstrator we have done that so we are able to maintain uh, more temperature humidity inside the chamber and that uh, uh, some uh, temperatures uh, at different places and all so that uh, this thing uh, we are able to do that <clears throat> so now coming back to this uh, that how what is the role of this you know smart machine in smart factory and industry 4.0 so let us see so when we are looking into smart factory you know there is a networking of people and i told you that machine and resources all cyber physical this thing all fine but the core of this smart factory is the uh, the machine so now when we are talking of a machine Uh, so we have to look into a physical machine we have to look into virtual machine we have to see the machine is iot enabled it should it should be able to uh, it should give information about what is happening on the machine 
and also why it is happening on the machine and also it should be able to tell us uh, that uh, uh, do some adaptive control and all and prognosis so this is the core of the you know that uh, you know machine tool or the you know, this thing is a core of the as many smart factory which is based on metal cutting so this is uh, about that so this is the first uh, this thing i think sir i think it is regarding the smart machine tool so uh, now later i will uh, i wanted to talk on the intelligent machining so if anybody has any questions i can take a break and i can answer the questions hello hello yes dr prakash yeah, yeah yes uh, i think uh, if anybody has any questions i, I can uh, take yeah. up on the yes, uh, machine tool smart machine tool uh, yeah, yes sir or uh, industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing and then i can uh, i can proceed for towards the machining uh, okay. yeah intelligent uh, sir uh, there is one question from dr ramchandra krishna swami yes sir yes sir uh, how is the online balancing carried out while yes, a machine sir. process is in progress yeah yeah so uh, actually uh, sir i think uh, yeah so i think i have not given you much detail I, actually what we have developed it is uh, not that machining when machining is happening the balancing is done it is before machining before the machining uh, that we uh, using the module it means once the like if you take a machine tool no so you will have some fixtures we will have spindle and some fixtures right sir and or some job also you can mount on that so we, before you start the machining uh, process we can check the, the uh, unbalance uh, that uh, machine uh, you know uh, just using the mod module on the machine we can check the unbalance and we can correct it before the cutting yes sir hope that uh, it is uh, this thing hello yeah yes sir uh... it is just before the before the machining so this unbalanced dynamic unbalance will occur in the spindle uh, basically because of fixturing or the fixture or jobs so that uh, before cut cutting we can we can we can check that level and if it is okay then cutting will start otherwise it will prompt us to correct it and we can correct it on machine only so we need not have to call anybody the operator can do it that is the way this module is there yeah uh, Dr. Ramachandra, sir, uh, would you like to have uh, any query? Yeah, you can unmute yourself and uh, you can speak. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Ramachandra, sir. Hello, uh, Dr. Anand. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I tell you, I was muted. Now I must thank uh, Dr. Vinod. I mistook that that balancing was going to be done while the machining process is on. If there is an unbalance induced and it results in vibration or some such thing, I thought okay. it would automatically correct. But I'm mistaken. So thank yeah, thanks yeah. for the clarification, Dr. Vinod. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. in, is any? Uh, yeah. I hope that uh, because there are some uh, issues when there is a cutting process is going on, uh, that balancing uh, 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 it will not. It will not you, may, you may not be able to. If you look into the uh, balancing um, theory, uh, yes. how it is done, then uh, it is uh, it is very difficult when you. Want I, 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 I I understand. I understand. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So, thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Professor Ansarish uh, has a question. Yeah. Sir, please. Yes, sir. Uh, so, Dr. Prakash, I think it was a very lucid presentation. Thank you. Uh, so, you started from the very basics about defining industry 4.0. Uh, yes, that was very nice. So, I have a question. See, when you look at uh, industry 1.1, 2.0, there was a very clear demarcation. 1.0, yes, you said, was steam power. Second is uh, the electrical, yes. was electric power. So, yeah. can such a clear, crisp distinction can be made between 3.0 and 4.0? Okay, that is first question. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so definitely, sir. So the clear distinction is that that in 3.0, that machines are basically auto autonomous, but uh, an automatic, uh, but uh, they are standalone, standalone in sense means uh, they are that uh, they are not connected to each other. You know, need not be connected to each other. Maybe, but need not be connected to each other. Means in the three also a robot can in the industry three also a robot was assisting a uh, CNC machine. Right, sir. But uh, that uh, if you look into industry four, uh, that all the asset, 
the robots, the machine tool, inspection systems, uh, CAD, uh, CAM, they are all connected, sir. well connected. That is point number, but that itself is not making it unique. What it makes it unique is that these all informations are available on cloud, invariably. Means these machines, if uh, you know, if one machine is at uh, Bangalore and other machine is at uh, uh, Chennai from the same company, at same type, uh, then the information uh, you know ca can be seen, uh, you know, and uh, it can flow from one place to other place. That is uh, that IoT. That is okay. second thing. Then third yeah, thing, that, sir, that yeah, that makes it unique. Yeah. Cyber physical system, sir, virtual, virtual. So yeah. now in this we are talking of virtual reality, augmented reality, digital twins, and all. And also AIML. So these uh, these three four points are making this industry 4.0 unique. I'm mean, slightly different than industry three. Okay. Yeah, that, that that is clear. You explained it very well. But I was looking for something that can be explained to somebody you know uh, who is oh, not too technically oriented. In yes, fact, sir. industry 1.0, 2.0, when uh, yes, steam power was there, yes, industry yes, machines have to be located close to the steam source. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, correct. When the electric yes, sir. power came, they, they became distributed. You can have in different places because electric yes, power can be transmitted. So yes, that was yes. a big change. In a similar yes, way, yes. I think that change probably will be coming. But right mm -hmm. now, I see between 3.0 and 4.0, uh, yes, even yes. though we can explain in detail you know, what the differences are, I think yes. probably we need some more time for seeing this very clearly. Yes, yes sir. So to specifically ask a question, if you go to your slide number 10. Okay. Uh, where you had, uh, you know, uh, had a flow chart, uh, yes, right? Sorry, sorry, yeah. number ten, if I noted it correctly. Yeah, I will come back to that. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so is, here, yeah, no, slide yeah, number ten. Okay. If you were to uh, make it three point two type uh, system, what mm -hmm. uh, connectivities will be disappearing from here? This is now four point zero. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so sir, now, that, uh, yeah. So, point, oh, which ones will go away? Yeah. So this this will go, sir. That cutting process and then process this one. This will go. Pro uh, measurement portion will go. This will be remaining, sir. This servo control and CNC, you know, is level one. Level yeah. one will still remaining, sir. So okay. Thing, yeah. This is so there. cutting this process. Will be disappearing. Even cutting process model will disappear, or what? What will be disappearing? Yes, sir. Entire cutting process monitoring, including model, will disappear, sir. And also the measurement. On machine, mm -hmm. on met machine metrology also will disappear, sir. Okay, those are and database. Uh... Database uh, also, I think it is uh, disappearing, sir. I think most of the CNC machine go, uh, that generation three will not have any uh, big database and all, and no okay. supervisory model. So there is nothing like that. So it is basically a CNC closed loop CNC where where it it, it is you know it can uh, it can correct the uh, you know positions axis positions and all automatically. Okay. That's the way it works, sir. Okay, is it fair to say that cutting process modeling was not done until 4.0 came in? That is 21st century uh, is what everybody says. But cutting yeah, process was being monitored, post-process measurements yeah, were yeah, being right, right. So forward. yeah, so yeah, so coming uh, just to clarify, sir. Actually, although we wrote cutting processes, but level two, uh, we are not mo mo monitoring only cutting processes, but also we are monitoring the machine, uh, machine you know uh, pa parameters like vibrations and temperatures and all. So mm -hmm. that is not shown very clearly here. But basically, uh, this is, uh, you know, the level two, we are monitoring cutting process as well also machine also we are monitoring, sir, like mm -hmm. uh, on machine monitoring. So both are going, sir. So in case of industry uh, three, you know, that, uh -huh. uh, that uh, monitoring of not only process as well as machine uh, uh, diagnostics uh, and all it is going, sir. Okay. Yeah, again, so I think some of these were done. So I th that's why I'm saying that between 3.0 and 4.0, Yes, sir, uh, yes, sir. The distinction is, uh, you know, uh, these yeah, it's gradual, sir. It's it's a gradual yeah, sir. yes, sir. Yeah, 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 right, right. So that's you are very much right because that if you look into that uh, three and four, so the, in four three is going to be there <laughs> by default. So it is a gradual means it is not like a, a you know the, the difference what you are seeing from the one and two because steam and the uh, electrical, and okay. also from electrical to electronics. So big difference, okay. sir. But here it is electronics to software. Electronic software. I think that's a very uh, crisp way of saying. Yeah. 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 Software are more. all electronics. Uh, yes, now 4.0 uh, takes software. Uh, true, sir, true, sir. True, sir. True, yeah. sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Uh, if yes, sir. Any questions? Uh, no, sir. Uh, no one has uh, kept it in okay. the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, uh, so uh, then I will come to the second part uh, that uh, I think it is much more of futuristic. We are, just now I was talking to Professor Anand Suresh. So uh, regarding this intelligent machining. So uh, these, uh, if you look into the the first part, you know that uh, smart uh, machine tools uh, and all. So the first part where the diagnostics and all, uh, also that uh, uh, to some extent, uh, you know that uh, uh, cloud-based uh, techniques and some uh, analytics and all possible. Uh, what is happening on machine and all we are able to see or uh, basically on machine elements oh very well in the, the that is happening and uh, nowadays machines are coming industry 4.0 compliant machines if you buy any oems uh, from even in india also people are coming out with the those machines where you can do uh, see what is happening in the machine definitely in the machine what the machine elements but uh, if you look into the process what is happening in the uh, cutting uh, processes and all uh, that is uh, still it is uh, uh, it is uh, not fully implemented at the industry so it is quite interesting from academic point of view and a lot of works are happening in academia uh, so i have i'm just putting some uh, thing what in cmt is done more works are being hap uh, is happening uh, in academia so now let us see what is intelligent machining so if you see the way machine tool is a closed loop system if you basic machine tool uh, if you see the functions and all if you make the metal cutting also a closed loop process you are going towards intelligent machining so what is happening in that that in that um, this thing intelligent machining we have invariably we have sensors which are sensing the machining processes uh, like you know it could be uh, turning or uh, it could be grinding or it could be milling uh, so that way we are sensing and this uh, we are uh, we are this uh, sensors uh, they are uh, feeding uh, information to some models process model which are meant for optimizations and also some uh, uh, predictions and all uh, so that it can do it so these process models are basically invariably if you leave is based on machine learning and artificial engineering techniques uh, and uh, there only uh, people are you know finding out a suitable model uh, to look into the machining processes which are basically stochastic and you know and uh, and lot of randomness is there so a lot of work is happening to make this process model robust then only it can uh, predict and it can uh, you know and it can optimize the cutting processes so this is the, so if we are able to achieve uh, if you are able to make this a uh, closed loop system where this uh, in real time when a uh, machine is a uh, machine tool is given and uh, without operator intervention uh, with the sensor mounted on that if it is uh, able to correct the cutting processes and all and uh, able to give a accurate component then it is called intelligent machining so let us see uh, it is a big challenge uh, for metal cutting uh, r and d guys so now why actually it is so difficult and uh, why intelligent machining is required both we will see so machining processes i think as on date as you were mentioning it is open loop as well also stochastic so sometimes you know suddenly there will be some chipping of the tool and all sort of thing so that makes it there tool wear and all uh, if you look into the, you will find that uh, they are basically non stationary zero you, know, you cannot uh, it's not really stationary phenomena and uh, there are many things which are uh, resulting into um, uh, affecting the machining processes so it is not only tool it is job uh, you know the job hardness uniformity in the in the this thing hardness or the uh, composition of the material also tool and also machine machine itself machine vibration uh, spindle vibration axis vibration uh many things and even coolant uh, uh, lubrication so many things are there which are ma making finally the product so a lot of uh, things are there and uh, you know that's why it is much more challenging so um that's it and uh, secondly uh, why it is also required is that uh, you know uh, it is definitely required because uh, we have very high, uh, the machine tools are very expensive and uh, nowadays if you see in this arena already in the industry 3.0 itself uh, it was automatic you now with iot and all it is much more smart factory and people are talking of even inspections and all this part of uh, you know part of uh, auto, like this uh, integrated inspection on machine metallurgy and all sort of things uh, less uh, very less human intervention people are talking without uh, man also operation of factories and all smart factories so this all you know then in that case uh, it is very important otherwise uh, you know um, uh, even though if, if you are monitoring the basic machine and if you are not monitoring the process the component will go out of the uh, uh, tolerance and all so that's way. <clears throat> so some of the issues which we have looked into when we are talking of intelligent machining it could be uh, any type of uh, metal cutting 
the wear of tool uh, wear of tool or grinding wheel and all fracturing of tool uh, all this thing and there's some plastic deformation occurring in the tool itself uh, temperatures uh, which are occurring uh, you know at the, um, between tool and the job interfaces uh, uh, vibrations which are occurring uh, chatters which are occurring chip formation mechanisms uh, and uh, also thermal thermal issues which are also affecting the uh, machining process and uh, finally we have to look into uh, that uh, definitely we should uh, the aim of all this thing uh, that intelligent machining to optimize the machining processes also we should be able to predict pretty uh, prognosis of the process that is uh, the aim so now let us look into the basic things uh, i know i this uh, i am not going to talk much in this area but just some few basic things uh, this thing is regarding that what are sensors uh, we can use it for intelligent machining so now if you see that cutting force is the most common you know that um, this thing which is used in uh, metal cutting to sense the process so if you look into turning milling grinding and all so if you see that uh, the blue one is a milling and there's a turning so turning and milling are two processes where the demand is very high and the cutting force is uh, uh, measurements uh, will help uh, these two processes when it comes to grinding uh, i think uh, you can use grinding for this thing that uh, you know cutting force but also you can use acoustic emission i think that is quite uh, that a lot of uh, solutions are possible with acoustic emission and vibration so that way also possible so there are other uh, sensing uh, elements uh, or say basic sensors like uh, force sensing uh, vibration sensing acoustic emission sensing and with some some sometimes some of the processes you can monitor using vision based systems also so that we have to on some displacement measurements sometimes the current voltage and power also nowadays in uh, what you have seen that lot of solutions are coming in the you know uh, using uh, monitoring of uh, power means energy monitoring i think invariably we have to do uh, part of in any industry 4.0 solutions uh, because that that will give you you know what is the power consumption you can optimize the power power is very costly so invariably people do uh, you know that energy monitoring so now people are coming out with some modules uh, for process monitoring or process optimization based on uh, basically monitoring of energy or basically torque or power uh, which is uh, drawn from the machine so that a lot of people i think uh, that trying to come because invariably you are going to have this uh, you know uh, that um, this uh, power monitoring energy monitoring in the built into the mo modern day cnc uh, machine tools so why not to use this itself and try to uh, you know do something on the process so that is also going on apart from that strain measurements and all it is possible yeah so now let us see uh, that uh, what are the type of uh, basic error some few errors and uh, what how uh, which uh, sensing will help us so if you look into tool we are monitoring and all the modules which are people will develop so majority of things are coming with uh, cutting force and uh, uh, also some of them are coming with uh, vibration and acoustic emission quite good amount of uh, to, uh, this thing and some vision based uh, directly they can measure the uh, wear tool wear so that some solutions are there where people are working or they have come out with some prototyping they have done it so now it comes to when it comes to chatter so i think you know where chatter is easily detected with vibration so vibration and cutting force uh, they are the two important uh, uh, parameters by which we can uh, look into the chatter when it comes to the tool breakage you know the tool some uh, chipping off or something definitely as, as we know all that that if a tool has some um, uh, some uh, chipping off or some um, uh, breakage and all then cutting force will suddenly change very uh, drastically so cutting force based models are much more popular and all when it comes to some high end process uh, you know sort of uh, uh, like uh, <coughs> build age formation or some chip type uh, chip formation and all <coughs> then cutting force and acoustic emission these two sensing are found to be much more useful than other methods so of course everywhere power you can see i think is slightly older uh, some few years back i think uh, but nowadays the people are trying even though it is not they are not finding a full proof solution but they are trying to give solution which are based on power for all these uh, uh, issues okay now the coming to development of uh, you know for uh, this thing a module for intelligent machining so invariably i think i have tried to make it very simple but um, to uh, for uh, people to uh, this thing understand but uh, uh, it is really difficult for uh, if you want to achieve good results so let us see how we, we are going about intelligent machining how to make we are making the closed loop system and this thing so basically as, as, as usual we have to monitor the process using the sensor so once we are monitoring the using sensor like if you are using vibration sensor as for example or uh, like um, this thing then uh, some data will come okay 
so data will come no so the data raw data itself we cannot take it the reason is that it know that uh, now we are trying to monitor the vibration from the cutting processes but the vibration can come from the machine itself you know there could be bearing problem or some other issues so that uh, so then it always a problem or it could be from environmental vibration also can come so we must have to do some filtering okay so that we should know very uh, well filtering techniques and all we have to apply uh, this thing then the information what comes after filtering from there we have to extract the features like you know that uh, basic raw information is quite going to be very huge so we cannot manage that you know for uh, proper learning so we will have to find out uh, in, uh, that what are the features uh, which can be can be used and from this entire raw signals and all and that uh, that we use it to uh, you know some sort of uh, ml based uh, ai based uh, modules we have to develop and then that uh, this uh, we have to do training using this uh, you know that information whatever uh, is uh, extracted uh, through feature extraction and from the data then uh, some learning we have to do then we have to build the knowledge you know we have to need, uh, build the knowledge uh, for uh, to find, identify the tool we are to work or, or or for surface quality work work with surface quality so like that we have to build the knowledge once the knowledge is built and all then in that case then we can uh, use we can integrate this with our cnc uh, this thing we can do some programming high level programming and can implement but most of things we people are using uh, matlab and all so it is easy uh, possible to or uh, uh, implement actually in the uh, cnc uh, this thing control systems uh, we can do that so finally once it is integrated then we can it can help us to do few things it can help us to um, either change uh, that uh, you know cutting conditions or it can gives at least it can give us uh, some information regarding process prognosis some alarms some 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 uh, some dashboards we can do where we can know the wear we can know the surface quality we can at least we can see visualize and uh, later we can use it for once we are very sure that if things are working well then we can use it for adaptive control automatically so that that we have to be very careful <clears throat> so now now so the same thing it is there is a basic like the turning process manufacturing process is a turning here so on uh, some signal will come then we'll have to extract the features and then uh, based on that we have to do some decision making which is am will best and then uh, based on that some uh, you know we have to find out which are faulty which are normal and all and that that is the way it works actually okay so and then it, uh, we have to put it to control system and then it works so this is general structure uh, it's very this thing simple to uh, um, make it uh, this thing but uh, once we are looking into a specific processes and we are looking into a type of uh, if you want to monitor if you want to predict the type of wear or something or some tool life or if you want to surface pro process uh, uh, quality like surface uh, roughness or sort of thing this is very difficult challenging to prove that actually and validate it works uh, you know in all condition so now i will just uh, take one example which cmt have we have tried to do and of course it is uh, one of uh, that so let us see uh, this is we try to use uh, the predicts uh, we try to predict the surface roughness in diamond turning oh, process yeah so what we did i think uh, we did some design of experiment and also that you know that i will not go deep into that so basically we had a machine a diamond turning machine our intelligent adaptation turning machine so we have uh, some workpiece uh, of some uh, this thing we have fixed a workpiece size uh, for uh, you know that way and then uh, some targeted uh, surface finish uh, we are planning 10 nanometers and all and the speed range of the machine is 50 to 7000 rpm and the load capacity and these are the basic specification of machine then uh, we have selected uh, you know to do it for a uh, you know a particular type of uh, shape which is flat and material is uh, aluminum 6061p6 is the optical grade aluminum so we try to develop the uh, you know uh, uh, this thing that module for predicting the surface finish okay so uh, tool also we fixed uh, you know a particular tool is mono crystalline diamond tool uh, with zero rake angle and the nose radius of 3 that is based on some literature and all uh, this thing we did and then uh, we started uh, doing uh, we started measuring the uh, vibration uh, you know in three x uh, directions okay x y z direction we started measuring the vibration and the vibration we were monitoring from the tool tool side not from spindle side so tool side we were monitoring the vibration in x y z direction so there's a way and then finally uh, surface reference measurement uh, we started doing uh, you know based on design of experiment uh number of experiments we have done and the surface roughness measurement what done using uh, our uh, optical profiler what we have at cmti so let us see what is the input and what is the output so that let us see 
So if you see into the, the independent variable for getting into this, uh, is a cutting speed like speed, feed, and depth of cut, and also the vibrations, uh, also which we are measuring into x uh, tangential uh, cutting force and feed uh, direction and thrust uh, force. All those things, uh, th sorry, uh, thrust uh, thrust direction, that is vx, vx, all the vibration only. Uh, so it is a tangential in tangential direction, in feed direction, and in thrust uh, cutting uh, force direction. There's a vx, vy, vz. So these three and plus these three. So this uh, we had, and of course, uh, finally we are getting a component and surface finish. So this within information we have tried to use and try to uh, predict the surface uh, roughness using two methods. One is the uh, you know multiple regression analysis, and other one is the artificial intelligence. Uh, sorry, artificial neural network based uh, module. So we, if you look into that, that uh, the blue one is the uh, the the this one, uh, the real. After that validation, we have then we are after that implementing this into our uh, machine. We did uh, some such some 25 experiment uh, further, and in that uh, we try to see uh, what is uh, what we are measuring and what uh, we are predicting. We try to predict uh, using two techniques. So that is uh, using regression analysis and also ARN. So we found that this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, that ANN based uh, module was giving slightly better fit to the, you know, the measured one. So the error was in uh, terms of uh, around, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, around uh, plus minus uh, six percent. Where that in case of MR, it was plus minus some, uh, uh, I think, uh, twelve percent. So that's the way uh, that uh, the goodness of fit was there. So reasonably, it gave some. Um, it is uh, some. Uh, good uh, um, uh, indication that uh, it is possible. So it is one of, but uh, it is uh, again, I told you it is for a, a one particular shape. So uh, if the shape is changing and the cutting tool is changing, then uh, uh, and material is changing, then we have again challenges. So uh, we are still working out how to make a, you know, some sort of a, a robust uh, model for diamond turning itself. Uh, so then comes the turning of other processes. So it is quite challenging. So that's why we are finding it that uh, that uh, I, you know to make a, a sort of uh, um, uh, universal uh, model for uh, turning alone, it is a big challenge. <coughs> Considering the type of tool, material, machine, and um, uh, other parameters. <coughs> So now this is the regarding our experience regarding that uh, prediction. Uh, but uh, if you have a specific job, a specific cutting tool and all, uh, then uh, we can uh, and uh, specific and then we can do it. Means uh, that way. if you are changing the job shape and uh, tool and all, it's much more difficult. So that for that uh, we we are still working on that. Okay. <clears throat> now coming to tool condition monitoring. So uh, that uh, is slightly comparatively easier than the process. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, prediction. So tool condition monitoring uh, we can do. I think we have tr tried to do using cutting forces in CMTA as well as also using the vibrations. So whatever is that, we have signal. Uh, we are taking raw signals while cutting. Uh, process is going on. It could be force or it could be vibration or could be caustic emission. And then uh, we are doing some signal processing and then some data processing for the uh, feature extractions and all. Then uh, some training uh, uh, of the uh, this thing, uh, machine learning and training of the modules, uh, which is AI based, and then finally the result. That is the way we are doing the tool condition monitoring. So they are also see, we have done try to do something based on uh, again vibration. Uh, this uh, force actually. This is uh, this thing. What I am showing is the force. So with this uh, we are able to you know basis uh, basically using this. They are also we use a neural network actually and try to do that. So we had some inputs. Like uh, cutting speed, uh, feed rate, depth of cut, uh, and then uh, also that cutting forces also we were monitoring, and the output was of uh, uh, flank wear of the tool, uh, of the turning tool. So that was that, and then we did some uh, sort of like training, uh, neural networks training, and then we could predict the tool wear. So uh, that uh, uh, it is able to give us the uh, uh, we try to quantify the wear also. And also qualitatively, uh, you know, with the life we wanted to connect that uh, whether the life is remaining and all, and uh, also with some remarks. So this module also we developed a CMTI uh, for tool condition monitoring, uh, but particularly in ultra precision turning operations. So that is the way we have done in CMTI. Now uh, coming to that, uh, that what benefit we are getting? If suppose we have a smart machine tools and intelligent machining, so then in that case. 
we can change, we can increase, you know, we can get a higher efficiency and productivity. So obviously, so we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll get uh, more accurate component, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, also we can reduce the downtime, you know, if because we are able to uh, do diagnostics, we are able to monitor the uh, lower losses. We call uh, you know uh, overall equipment effect effectiveness OE and that OE losses. Why this uh, OE is lesser, you know? So that uh, we have done some work, which I will be uh, telling you last actually. So if you're getting into that uh, with uh, with uh, with um, analysis of OE losses, uh, that uh, that we can find out the regions why it is uh, where is the scope where there's improvement and all. So it is not uh, uh, whatever models we have developed at CMTI for uh, overall equipment effectiveness. Uh, we have also looked into the micro micro analysis. Of those, and particularly for metal cutting, and uh, also to find out why the losses are occurring. So anyhow, I think you know that OE and all is connected with uh, um, quality as well as uh, you know that uh, also. So we look into all the aspects and we try to do a few things. <clears throat> then the second thing is that machine accuracy. So there, I think uh, we are uh, that is a play uh, where we are we are well connected with uh, OE machine tool OEMs. So our aim is that you know why not to make machine tool also uh, you know uh, more accurate using this uh, techniques actually. So with using sensors and uh, real time feedbacks and uh, like that we have done that machine error compensation and uh, you know uh, techniques and all we develop and uh, machine itself is accurate. Then it comes to improvement in past part accuracy using intelligent machining. So that is that also we have been working continuously both. So if machine is accurate as well as the process is intelligent you can get more accurate uh, component and also if you have online mes uh, on machine metallurgy then it is uh, also better also we are looking into you know when we are uh, looking into smart machine tools and all we are looking into the uh, rela reliability you no know, machine how is machine is reliable so we are uh, we are working on many modules which are uh, uh, trying to predict and also gives uh, some information for proactive actions and uh, also uh, we are also looking into you know using the iot and all and um, uh, using smart factory uh, the ease of ease in operations you know? so that also we are uh, addressing so when we are looking into smart machine tools we are uh, looking into that aspect also so now let's see that our smart factory which are coming at the cmti uh, where we are having all type of machines so you can see the job is coming uh, and then it is getting checked with rfid tag and then uh, based on that uh, the information it is uh, which program has to run on which machine it is identifying and then the agv is there robots are there which are loading these uh, components on different machines and the operations will take place uh, based on the uh, that uh, part tag and then it is uh, going for the metrology metrology is going to be either on machine or even off some parameters on some parameters of of, of this thing and if everything is good then machine is uh, that component is uh, uh, ready for uh, you know that uh, uses so that is the way we are looking into that so this is a very simple way of looking into smart factory so that uh, the part comes the parts gets tagged and uh, gets identified and then accordingly that uh, cad cam uh, that cam uh, this thing uh, uh, programs are decided and which processes ha has to occur on which machine it is decided and accordingly the movements uh, using you know automatic movements using agv and robots will take place Parts will get loaded, unloaded, and then goes to next operation all like that. So this uh, this is a physical thing, but people can visualize. Also, uh, this uh, we have uh, you know sort of like a master controller with CAD CAM and digital twin and all based uh, sort of uh, things uh, which are uh, there uh, part of like that uh, in the smart factory. But behind the scene, lot of things are happening. So if you see <coughs> that this all in, you see the line green, red, and all. So the machines are well connected to each other. The informations are flowing uh, from machine using wired, wired, uh, uh, wired networks and all. Also, some of the informations are flowing through wireless networks also because some some sensors and all uh, which uh, which can transmit uh, you know through wireless uh, directly using some wireless uh, uh, protocols and all. Then we, that also information we are taking into our uh, server actually. So that is the way we are looking into. So they are well connected to each other, and then also the programs and other things are loaded through our uh, cam, uh, cat, uh, cam, uh, you know, sort of thing, and is getting here. And uh, also the sensors are all the sensors uh, either through CNC or through external sensor through either through wired or wireless. The informations are flowing back 
to iot server and all and then for there we are doing monitoring the conditions and doing uh, some decisions and all so that's the way we are doing that but from that uh, i was mentioning that uh, that entire thing we are putting on digital twin means all the machines and every asset whatever we have in this they have their uh, you know uh, you know um, uh, digital uh, twin also uh, which is in virtual mode and that uh, means we have a virtual factory also and that information uh, they are going to the digital twin part also and then uh, we are uh, with this uh, we are looking into even manufacturing digital twin and uh, we can we can do some analysis we can do some learning uh, from this uh, physical things and going to digital mode and all and uh, also performance digital twin also we can means uh, you know that uh, you, using the digital uh, twin we can predict uh, you know what is the going to happen uh, in this uh, machines uh, performance and all so that's the way we have been working so it is not like just like a connected smart factory it is also we are trying to have uh, digital uh, twin uh, also let's say basically cyber physical both uh, smart factory we are trying to put at our center <clears throat> so that is the way we are looking into that now some of the things uh, uh, see some of the work cmti has done uh, it is available on cmti iiot dot online so if you click uh, you can see a lot of things here it is you know it is uh, basically some of the modules which are it is basically for you know for academic interest as well as for some demonstrable we have put but however some modules uh, everything is not there but some basic things we have kept there for people for uh, people to see look into that how it works so this is there so some of things what uh, we have done is that is that you know we have developed some you know that converting technology for legacy machine to smart machine so that module is there in this and then uh, we have energy monitoring solution for msme we have done so we have what we have done we have come out with some low cost energy monitoring uh, which is uh, iot uh, iot based solution for small uh, scale industry you know so if what we have done there we have the hardware also we have developed you know so this is energy monitoring uh, using some uh, some uh, low cost uh, sens uh, sensor and electronics development at cmti uh, we are able to uh, provide some solutions which are in uh, few thousands uh, rupees people can uh, have for their machines so that is why we are looking into that so this is both hardware and software and dashboard development which is iot uh, this thing best we have done in this uh, process so that's there so now um, also we have a, a cnc machine uh, you know that how to connect uh, to you know uh, the iot server and uh, machine to machine connectivity of different uh, type of cnc machine we have done so different type of protocols using opc ua or some other th things we are trying so this uh, uh, you know how to this connectivity issue machine to machine connectivity issue Uh, we are trying to address by different uh, ways and means actually so also this process monitoring module uh, we have developed uh, one basic module is there in iot on online is based, based on again uh, power monitoring torque monitoring and power monitoring we have done something so i was also mentioning that over, overall equipment effect efficiency or effectiveness uh, that we have developed a module our module is slightly unique in the sense because we have done some you know oe losses if you see if you open our module we will find that how how this oe that what is contributing to this oe uh, losses and uh, micro analysis of that and then uh, uh, so that uh, you know users can uh, try to um, look into improvements and all uh, as a part of um, uh, sponsored work uh, we have been uh, actually we have taken a project where the smart foundry uh, we have is a basically you know industry uh, you can say two or three type of machine smart foundry machine and there we are trying to what we have done that we we wanted to make it iot this thing so there are many machines in a smart foundry and then we try to create a you know unified control panel uh, which is iot enabled and this info, from where we can tap the information from uh, industry 2 and industry 3 type of uh, foundry machines and uh, we can you know and take this information and uh, try to put to cloud based server so that is the way we have done that uh, one work so that way uh, you know to show that our um, this thing and it is basically sponsor work we have done so uh, cmt also you know as a part of this thing our people they have worked on uh, you know ai based uh, edge ai based uh, smart attendance monitoring uh, system which is basic, uh, which is uh, uh, looking into your face recognition uh, actually using uh, ai techniques as well as uh, skin temperature and um, also it is uh, proximity the sensors also there in that so with that we are able to 
uh, give you uh, the, uh, we are able to come out with a solution which can do attendance in this covid situation and all and uh, you know we can, we can based on face recognition as also it can also look into uh, uh, that covid uh, compliant norms and all whether the temperature and all is okay or not so that is the way we have done and now uh, we have been working uh, i think uh, ajay mentioned that for manufacturing and performance uh, digital twin we have been working and uh, also uh, we are working now we are coming out with a, a solution comprehensive condition monitoring module for rotating equipments so there we are going to monitor the vibration temperature and uh, energy uh, all three together and uh, which is basically going to be age, age analytic based uh, you know because uh, we taking a lot of information high sampling rate information to cloud and then do doing cloud based uh, you know analysis uh, are not uh, found to be um quite uh, good so we are trying to get uh, particularly when we are looking into uh, vibration based or acoustic emission based uh, condition monitoring then uh, we are we have to go for edge edge analytics uh, based only so that only processed information will go to cloud not the raw information so that's the way we have been working and we are coming out with hardware so that we are the hardware being developed uh, so that with that we feel that it will be very helpful for msme so this is actually is already prototyping is uh, done and we are making some trial so this is all about uh, uh, my uh, presentation today and uh, if i am open for the questions and uh, thank you for pa uh, pa uh, patient listening and i am ready for some more questions uh, regarding uh, uh, that my talk or in general anything about smart manufacturing and st4.0 yeah uh, thank you very much sir uh, it was really a wonderful presentation uh, so couple of questions are there the first yes, one is uh, Uh, is there any perceptible progress in making the surface engineering process, uh, for example, plasma coating, more yes, intelligent and more accurate? Yeah, <clears throat> sir. I think um, yeah. So um, uh, definitely, actually, we have been. Uh, if you look into that processes, plasma coating and all, uh, I think there also it is required, very much required, and I think much more required if you look into those processes. so basically cmt as such cmt as you know that our background is in machine tool so uh, and we developed uh, machine tools and uh, we have been working with for machine tool oems for quite long time since our inception most of the machine tool guys in uh, that oems in our country is there somehow connected to cmt so that way we our whatever we are focusing on basically sir on uh, machine tool uh, based solution but uh, Uh, as such, uh, for that coating uh, equipment and all, uh, invariably I think if you look into any type of coating, those are required. And uh, but uh, at this moment we are not working on that. But uh, uh, if uh, some people are interested, we can work with them actually, sir. <laughs> so that way, <laughs> so it is required, very much required for those processes. And uh, also uh, some uh, uh, advanced manuf uh, uh, manufacturing processes, which is based on. Uh, Uh, i think if you look into additive manufacturing only sir if you look into that uh, you know that uh, um, laser based or um, e beam based uh, processes which are used for uh, additive manufacturing they are also much more required sir this <laughs> techniques actually the process and this thing so that way and also uh, other type of uh, non conventional uh, manuf uh, uh, manufacturing processes very much required coating and also it is required sir because we also have some coating processes and various parameters are there sir so uh, i think uh, very much necessary but uh, uh, we are we are not actually unfortunately sir there no uh, oems working uh, in that uh, in this area i think there are very few people i think there are few people who are working in this coating equipment and all and if uh, they work with uh, they like to come forward then we will definitely will uh, like to work for those people also the next question is uh, is there a possibility that your experience can be translated to more difficult task of uh, tunnel boring which often break down due to the ground condition and many times due to tool failure uh, you are talking of tunnel boring no sir tunnel tunnel boring i think that yeah, is yes, very, yeah yeah so yeah so that uh, sir i think this techniques if you look into like this some of things like vibration based or some sort of thing and all uh that uh, can be used actually uh, you know this uh, for that uh, uh, other operation not like that uh, only for metal cutting and all it can be used for um, um, other like uh, boring uh, tunnel boring and all uh, but uh, same time uh, we require to have some domain expert in that area also particularly those geological or civil and all so i think uh, we have come across some issues uh, 
but when it comes for uh, coming from machine point of view if you take a tunnel boring machine also it is uh, it can be easily you know uh, we can easily uh, implement that so some of the techniques uh, even for uh, people are using condition monitoring for bridges and all sort of thing bridge uh, sort of like that also we are doing a uh, tunnel boring machine also we can do monitoring and we can do that but only thing is the process part when it comes to tunnel boring that when it is doing that uh, you know boring of this uh, um, earth and which is filled with earth and rock and different combination there only the domain uh, knowledge is required from the people who are in that area but as such machine monitoring is very well possible and uh, if uh, this threshold uh, levels are fixed uh, with the working with domain expert then uh, this uh, iot should not be a problem i think it can be uh, easily done sir yeah uh, the next question is uh, any specific work carried out on uh, new cnc fixtures yeah sir I, uh, yeah so that uh, that is one area sir we have not put uh, that is the area where we are trying to work now i think this is uh, a uh, fixturing fixturing uh, both um, uh, in the, this thing uh, uh, for cnc um, uh, all metal cutting machine uh, we are trying to not much work has been done by cmt but we are trying to we are uh, talking with some uh, oems uh, and some people who are interested in fixtures uh, this thing also not only fixtures uh, that for uh, holding job also we are looking into tool holders also we are trying to work uh, we are in touch with some some of the oems uh, that so as such uh, this uh, two things uh, that is uh, work from cmt point of view i am just telling because in i'm not commenting on the other works done at other places but the cmt point of view we have we wanted definitely part of uh, metal cutting uh, machines the work fixtures uh, we wanted to make a smart and uh, also the tool cutting tool holders tool holders also we wanted to make them smart but a tool holder itself and that too also we wanted to we were looking forward to make it you know something like using for milling and all you know we have to use wireless techniques only so that and then it should be um, uh, somehow we should be able to see that it is uh, battery operated uh, you know that uh, transmitter which is mounted on tool holder so we are we have it's a proposal stage only sir so still i think not much work has been done by cmt in those two, two aspects sir. yeah next question uh, as we move towards intelligent manufacturing yes, is sir. the lack of indigenous cnc controllers going to be a bottleneck or is the deficiency compensated by intelligent intelligent manufacturing that is uh, can the connected mm -hmm. machines help one another in controlling mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. sir uh, i think uh, if you look from technology point of view that uh, not having indian uh, controller uh, is uh, not a issue because these people these guys uh, that uh, that uh, multinationals are very intelligent and they look into market so they are they are you know initially few years back uh, you will not find uh, controllers with open architecture but now this these guys uh, i think they are uh, making it open uh, also and they are uh, also making uh, they giving you a provision also that uh, you know you can uh, take their services in fact they themselves they are working in the iot area like panuk siemens and all so that is there so that is not issue i think now they are getting open so that is not a technical challenge basically but the pro basic problem why uh, we are looking to uh, for uh, uh, indian um, you know that uh, machine tool uh, cnc controllers and all or in cnc controller for it could be used for other machines also is that the the huge amount of uh, uh, this thing uh, imports actually sir. so our uh, parent ministry dhi is that uh, you know is having a focus on development of uh, indigenous controller uh, multi axis Uh, so that uh, it is from, from a point of view of uh, import substitution and uh, huge import actually sir that point of view but uh, as such uh, coming to smart uh, you know implementation not a big uh, issue actually so is there only thing is that the advantage uh, with um, if we could have been having indian uh, oems then uh, uh, they are uh, i think uh, much more uh, i think uh, many more modules can be thought so even uh, what is happening with this um, uh, oems uh, which are based abroad they are opening to the extent where they feel you know so uh, if uh, i think the question was that whether it is intelligent machine so making a machine smart uh, machine tool smart from diagnostic point of view or some uh, live prediction uh, i think still they are open i think that's not issue 
but coming to the process related thing uh, i think it, it is definitely if indian uh, controllers are available and then uh, we are able to work definitely we, we can work better with indian uh, controllers actually so for particularly for intelligent machines because that uh, not very sure whether uh, they uh, that uh, uh, this uh, uh, intelligent machining aspect uh, whether this uh, oems uh, um, they themselves they are working also like fanuc siemens you know they are uh, having uh, tied up uh, with many people and then doing it actually in fact the siemens is one project we are doing with cmcmt also so i just want to tell you so they are also coming up but uh, uh, for indian uh, uh, what you call research uh, uh, you know this korea uh it could have been easier if it could have been uh, that intelligent machining uh, if uh, uh, to develop module for intelligent machining if indian oems could have been there that is true sir yeah uh, that's it sir uh, we don't have any more questions uh, yeah uh, so if no questions uh, i like to thank uh, uh, the organizers and all the participants for patient listening and organizers for allowing uh, giving us opportunity